Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. I've long stated that when it comes to investing in crypto, at least my investment thesis, is that utility matters and will win the day. With Bitcoin being the least technologically advanced crypto on the entire damn planet, which I think is pretty easy to argue, uh, even with that being the case, I'm still very pro-Bitcoin and I want it to succeed. I've been holding Bitcoin since November of 2017, and I'm actually more confident today in, in Bitcoin's long-term viability than I was back then. And that's, that's due in no small part to the existence of a layer two technology that scales Bitcoin uh, without any sort of technical limitations or concerns. And that layer two technology is the XRP ledger, which requires the usage of XRP, by the way. So it's just so interesting to me. I, I just, I wouldn't have guessed this back in 2017, certainly not. I mean, I knew very little about crypto back then, especially, but, but I would not have guessed this, that XRP would be saving Bitcoin effectively. Because it, 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 it makes it possible for Bitcoin to have utility other than store value. Because I, I've long struggled with this concept that something can have a store of value when it does nothing, uh, does nothing else. And maybe, maybe, maybe I'd be wrong anyway. Like say, say Bitcoin never ended up having any sort of additional utility. Okay. Like I said, I've been struggling with the idea. Maybe I'm wrong. And uh, Bitcoin still would have persisted, even if you could never use it for anything except for you just hold it. Maybe. But I struggle with that because I just keep thinking as other cryptocurrencies get adopted and are, are used for other use cases, wouldn't the people that the new people jumping into crypto that want to invest in just you know, diversifying into crypto see that, you know, for instance, maybe it's XRP. They look at, oh, XRP, it's probably not going away because businesses are using it for reason A, B, C, one, two, three, whatever, whatever reason it may be. Well, then doesn't XRP start getting the store of value? And then if it starts going there, why does it go to the thing that doesn't do anything? So th that's 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 a big part of what I've been struggling with conceptually back to 2017. But, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, my thinking now in, in, in early 2023, and my thinking has certainly evolved, as any person should over time, as you, you know, you know look inwardly, you know, and, and, and actually think uh, from an intellectual level, what's going under, get perspective from others, do additional research. Uh, to me, at this point, I think I just I th I'm at a point where I think any layer one technology that has been adopted, whatever, whatever the reason is, if there's a technological limitation in terms of scaling this or that, well, I think that those things are going to be overcome. And increasingly, those are less of a problem because nowadays, who's launching a cryptocurrency with the technical limitations that Bitcoin has? Well, pretty much no, but you get what I'm saying. Anything that's been launched now that we've evolved, there's, you know, the crypto asset class has evolved to a certain degree anyway. If there's something there that people are like, yes, aha, that makes sense. Even if there's a limitation, I think that ultimately a layer two is always going to come along and fix those types of problems. And you're certainly seeing that here. I just wouldn't have necessarily guessed that, uh, but certainly not in 2017, that the first layer two technology to fix the Bitcoin problem in a way that, you know, there, there are no longer technical limitations. It's not Lightning Network. It's, it's the XRP ledger as a, used as a layer two technology. I mean, it's its own layer one with XRP, but it's just it's an incredible. Layer. So um, here's a headline from the Crypto Basic: Canadian merchants can now accept Bitcoin payments on XRP ledger. But uh, before going further and sharing additional thoughts on this, I do want to be clear: I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say. Right? I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so here's how. Uh, XRP and the XRP ledger are saving Bitcoin, ensuring Bitcoin's long-term viability. And the inverse is true. This is also helping Bitcoin, or Bitcoin's also helping XRP and the XRP ledger to ensure its, its long-term viability. But again, without XRP's incredible uh, traits that it's had dating back over a decade at this point, this relationship between the two coins wouldn't exist. So I still give more credit to XRP than Bitcoin, uh, but I, and XRP, obviously I'm biased. It's my favorite cryptocurrency, but again, even being biased back then, I was a blank slate and I sure as hell would not have guessed that, um, that it would be XRP ledger that would be used as the first successful layer two technology uh, to make Bitcoin functionally useful uh, as money effectively. So anyway, the piece reads as follows. And this is a major milestone, by the way. We're talking about merchants jumping in and actually accepting Bitcoin for payments 
and the XRP ledger underpins that. And again, XRP is required to make that happen. Just to be super clear, that is incredible that this is real life. Check this out. Spin the Bits is onboarding merchants for its pilot test. Spin the Bits is onboarding Canadian merchants interested in receiving Bitcoin payments via the XRP ledger to its first pilot test. The platform made this known in a tweet yesterday, requesting interested business owners to reach out to find out how to get started. For context, Spin the Bits is a cryptocurrency app that utilizes the XRP ledger to allow users to store and spend their Bitcoin at faster and cheaper rates. Notably, several members of the XRP community have hailed it as a better solution than Bitcoin's Lightning Network. And so pause. Um, why is it better than Bitcoin's Lightning Network? Well, certainly it's, that's true. It is in, in early 2023 at the time of recording this because you can only facilitate smaller transactions, uh, you know, typically under $200 with Bitcoin's Lightning Network. It's also rather illiquid. It has to be pre-funded and there are other technical limitations. And you know, currently developers are having trouble overcoming this. So it's not that you can't facilitate a successful transaction on the Lightning Network. It's that there are extreme limitations that reduce its utility in an incredible way. Now, I want Lightning Network to work without technical limitations. So I'm rooting for it. I'm not against it. Like I'm pro Bitcoin, I'm pro XRP. And given that I've been a Bitcoin holder since 2017, I would love to have competing platforms increasing utility for Bitcoin. You better freaking believe that. I do want Lightning Network to succeed. I'm just being a realist here. Today, if you say it works today, okay, fine, technically, what kind of loose definition of the word works are you employing in life? Because I don't see how you can reasonably say that it works when you could barely do anything with it in terms of uh, transaction size. It, just, it, it doesn't make sense. But again, all of this has already been solved. It's been solved with the XRP ledger because you can to you, but with basically what they're doing in a nutshell, you tokenize the Bitcoin. So it's represented on the XRP ledger, but it's, it is stored. There's a, there's a third party that works with uh, spin the bits. And so actual Bitcoin is required. Actual Bitcoin is absolutely required. It has to be held. And um, this also requires the uh, creation or the usage of XRP. And so it's, it's certainly a win-win. But again, no technical, the problem has been solved, folks. Bitcoin's not going away. I, 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 don't, I, I find it unlikely at this point because the problem's been solved. You can spend money, Bitcoin just like United States dollars or Mexican peso, pick your fiat currency. It works today. It's not a question anymore. It's not a science experiment. And the first, again, you know, network, it's being used as a layer two here. It's a layer one technology for XRP, but it's being used as a layer two here. Uh, first to solve it, again, XRP ledger. Peace continues. Notably, the Lightning Network only partially fixes Bitcoin scalability concerns. For one, before users can transact on the off-chain solution, they still have to fund it with an on-chain transaction, which takes a long time with accompanying on-chain costs making it a frustration solution for first-time users. While it is not clear that Spin the Bits totally fixes this, the app adds Bitcoin to the, to the uh, user balance after the first confirmation, making it at least faster to fund uh, per the promotional video. Yeah, so to be clear, um, one, once the wallet's funded, it's funded, and then that's when you can instantaneously move the, the XRP. So you're not actually going to have any sort of liquidity issues or anything like that, as is the case with the Lightning Network. And again, it settles in three to five seconds. The article cites it right here, and that is correct. The platform asserts that transactions made with Spin the Bits take three to five seconds. Notably, it works by issuing Bitcoin as an IOU on the XRP ledger. Yeah, that's what I was talking about a second ago. And, and so even though it is true that you're handing over your Bitcoin, it doesn't mean that you have to hand, or, hand over your entire net worth or all of your Bitcoin. You hand over whatever you might need to use so that you can spend it uh, as if it worked on the layer one chain, uh, you know, so you can use it for everyday purposes. You know, how much money are you spending a day? Okay, well, you know, just maybe you spend, put in that or a month's worth of whatever it is. Maybe it's thousands of dollars for the typical person. Maybe it's if you want to spend everything in Bitcoin. And so you send, you, you, you know, you spin that over and you don't have to worry about handing over the keys for all of your Bitcoin. You know, I've seen that critique as well. But it's a nonsense argument, you know, because to what degree are you risking your net worth or your Bitcoin holdings if you send over a fraction of your total Bitcoin holdings, a fraction of your total net worth? It's 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 a nonsense argument. It doesn't matter. And even then, if you're talking about a third party, which is BitGo, I mean, 
there are legal remedies if something actually went wrong. But so I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, this is what it is. Peace continues. In response to the announcement from Spin the Bits yesterday, attorney John Deaton hailed the app as a model, uh, model example of crypto utility. The lawyer representing thousands of XRP holders as a friend of the court in the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission case against Ripple asserted that the Lightning Network is not the only or best option for spending Bitcoin. And here's the actual tweet on your screen from Attorney John Deaton. Uh, so referencing this news, uh, Attorney Deaton wrote, To me, this is one of the best examples of crypto utility. The Lightning Network is not the only or best option for spending your Bitcoin. Jay, who is the founder of Spend the Bits, uh, developed an app utilizing the XRP ledger to allow a person to spend their Bitcoin and do it safely in three to five seconds. Uh, and then the piece continues. It is worth noting that Spin the Bits filed a brief in support of Ripple in the SEC case. The company poked holes at it. Uh, the SEC's claim that investors could not find use cases for XRP without Ripple's efforts. Yeah, and so I had a good time running through that. And there are a couple things that I thought, based on this news, would be worth highlighting again here. And so there's this idea of there being some sort of common enterprise. Uh, now, of course... You know, the SEC, they initially asserted that Ripple is the common enterprise, then they backed off that. And then they basically, they said things that indicate that perhaps it's the entire XRP ecosystem that is the common enterprise, which is also complete and utter nonsense. But here, uh, Jay from Spin the Bits, <clears throat> he and his legal team tear that concept apart. So there's this little section from the amicus brief, uh, which is filed at the end of October, so just a few months ago. And they're talking about how there is no common enterprise here. They wrote the following. The second factor of the Howey test is whether a common enterprise existed. Ripple's vision of XRP utility involved improvements to the banking infrastructure and the financial system. On the other hand, uh, Spin the Bits, on the other hand, is a peer-to-peer -peer payment platform that is actually fulfilling the original goal of Bitcoin by creating a platform for instant peer-to-peer -peer transactions. While the, oh, by the way, I'll note the, that he does cite that the original Bitcoin white paper, Bitcoin, it's titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And that's the one thing that Bitcoin is not, on layer one anyway. It is not a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. That's for damn sure. It functionally doesn't work due to its technological limitations. So anyway, but he links to that, that white paper. And then he says, while the CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, has taken the position that you can't buy coffee with XRP, Spin the Bits is designed to facilitate such pur purchases. This alone illustrates the exact opposite of a common enterprise. Yeah, and one of my <laughs> favorite parts of this thing too, uh, which, uh, by the way, I think that from a technical perspective, this is the best amicus brief that the judge should look at from a technical perspective in terms of explaining how the XRP ledger works. But one of my favorite things in this thing is this sentence, which I'll highlight right here, which reads as follows. Um, or maybe it was actually, maybe... Maybe it was a little bit lower. I might have missed. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. I was, I was looking at the wrong page. I was looking at the right spot of the wrong page. It was this one right here. Uh, take a look at this. I love this. <laughs> this is true, by the way. He wrote, in fact, if spin the bits were to scale, it could, in theory, become a competitor to Ripple's on-demand liquidity system that also runs on the XRP ledger. So, folks, let me ask you, how can there be a common enterprise if there are competing forces so I know the thing about this, how can <laughs> these competing forces exist in a common enterprise? Because again, even if the SEC is not claiming that Ripple's the common enterprise, they're basically arguing, if even if they won't say it like this, what they're arguing is that the entire XRP ecosystem is the common enterprise. How can there be competing forces in a common enterprise? That doesn't sound very common to me, does it to you? I sure as hell don't think so. So and that is true, by the way. They actually, in theory, could. Doesn't mean that they're aiming to do that or that that's the purpose. But the technology allows for it, is the point. And they could branch out, and they could get adoption. And so they're looking to expand, and there's another article here. I don't really feel like it's necessary for me to uh, to read this. But um, it was, or wait, uh, here is this one, yeah, yeah. Uh, XRP Ledger-based Bitcoin spending solution sets its sights on El Salvador. And so look, they're looking to expand, and Jay has also stated, you know, founder of Spin the Bits, that, you know, United States would be in the future, but if it's illegal to do so, which would be completely absurd, then he won't be able to. And so that's why I filed the amicus brief. It impacts his actual business. Um, and then there was also uh, this here. So in response to Attorney John's De John Deaton's tweet that I shared with you just a minute ago, somebody was had a question. 
about spin the bits and wrote, is it pre-funded as Lightning Network? And again, it's it's not. And Attorney Deaton wrote that as well. He said 100% not true. Jay from Spin the Bits explained it in his amicus brief in the Ripple uh, XRP case. You can find it on crypto-law.us, which of course is Attorney Deaton's uh, website. And I shared the relevant snip, snippet um, having to do with that exact topic, which reads as follows. So here is the relevant portion for anyone interested. Spend the Bits utilizes a third-party gateway, BitGo, as a Bitcoin custodian for all deposits and withdrawals of Bitcoin using BitGo's application a programming interface, or API for short. <clears throat> BitGo Inc. is a digital asset trust, custodial, and security company headquartered in Palo Alto, California. None of this involves any efforts of Ripple or its executives. Spend the Bits queries secondary market exchanges to determine the exchange rate between Bitcoin and XRP. Using the exchange rate, an amount of Bitcoin equivalent to 10 XRP is deducted from the user's STB, spin the bits, Bitcoin wallet in order to activate the XRP ledger wallet and allow for ledger fees. So pause. That's where XRP is required. And again, I know it's not that much XRP, so in terms of supply and demand, uh, I wouldn't anticipate necessarily that it would have a huge impact. And there's just some crazy, over a long period of time, crazy global adoption of this technology, which is fine as possible. But to me, it's just another one of those things where it's yet another use case where XRP is required, instilling confidence. So when people come in to speculate, uh, does it make sense to invest in XRP? Well, yeah, probably not going away. Here's another reason. Because it's required in order to spend Bitcoin for this use case. So that's how I'm looking at it anyway. Anyway, and then also in the Amcus brief, uh, explaining this a little bit further, says, uh, spend the bits then creates an equivalent amount of Bitcoin IOUs on the XRP ledger using the remaining Bitcoin in the user's spend the bits Bitcoin wallet. These IOUs have a legal obligation for redemptions with the third party custodian BitGo Inc. None of this involves any efforts of Ripple or its executives. And so look, um, I've critiqued, you know, uh, handing over the keys to your crypto uh, when it comes, you know, for, well, if you're using an exchange for long term custody or crypto, I think that's a bad idea. When it comes to those firms out there, even if operating in good faith, where they're offering some sort of interest rate, some sort of return on your crypto, uh, I don't think that's exactly a brilliant idea. Now, this, although technically, uh, you know, the, the, it would be Bitco here that would be the custodian effectively, nobody's advocating that you have some sort of massive quantity on there. And so, because think about it, so in order to have any sort of reasonable, noteworthy gains, you'd have to probably hold a lot of crypto from those, those uh, firms that offer interest-bearing accounts. Well, here we're not talking about that. That's not an interest-bearing account, obviously. That's a completely different uh, concept. And, and so you don't have to have, there's no reason to have a crazy amount of Bitcoin held there. And then it's functional on the XRP ledger and you can use it anywhere. And fine, technically something goes wrong, people get burned. Technically possible, but... I mean, it, it, look, moving forward, here's the deal. There's always going to be firms out there that offer custody of crypto. It's not going away. That concept's not going to cease to exist. There will always be people out there that always want someone else to custody. So, you know, you know, critiquing the idea as though it's bad solely for that, to me, that doesn't make logical sense because that's not going to cease to exist. It's more like you need we need to properly audit firms that do this and have a proper due diligence, you know, and, and certainly investigation when it comes to firms like, well, pick your government agency that should be overlooking this. So that all should still happen. It needs to just work. Just like you can confidently deposit United States dollars in your bank account and you don't worry about it. Well, that's what you should have with crypto. That's what we have to evolve here, uh, evolve to here. And so again, it doesn't mean necessarily that you you know you, you want to put 100% of all the, the Bitcoin that you own into somebody where, you know, a firm where it's got all the keys, but it solves the problem. So to me, I see, I've seen people critique it. For, I was just like, that's a non-issue as far as I'm concerned. You know, put a, put one, if you have a bunch of Bitcoin, if you believe in it, what are you, are you even putting 1% of it in there? Is it even that? It's just, to, to me, it's a non-issue. I think it's the coolest damn thing. It's, it's an incredible concept. It shows that a technology can be used as a layer two technology that actually solves a problem and fulfills Satoshi Nakamoto's vision, utilizing Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer cash system. Coolest damn thing on the planet as far as I'm concerned. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.